Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple cards using some of the just released products from Honeybee Stamps. I hopefully when I up upload this it'll be back to back but I just did a release and review video of their newest release. I'll have a link to it at the end in case you missed it. And yeah, could not resist using the new Lovely Layers Strawberries Wafer Die Set. So when it comes to um, any die set where I ha I'm doing like multiple pieces, like this one's got quite a few, I start always with my scraps and then I go to my full sheets of cardstock or my, like my big scraps, whatever. I've mentioned this before, I keep every single little scrap of cardstock, specialty paper, all the things, because I end up using them. You know, if you find you're getting like overwhelmed with it and they're just piling up, yeah, you might have to think up like a different system. <laughs> but for me, I I can't I can't keep scraps. I I keep them and then but I use them constantly. So with a set like this, I you know got everything laid out first, all the cardstock pieces, etc. You know, I laid out all my wafer dies with all the cardstock colors I was going to use. Then I did all of my die cutting. And then I had everything laid out and then it was time to assemble. Assembling these is really easy. There is a layout guide that comes with the set. For the most part though, it's 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 pretty obvious. Everything just lines up. So you can tell exactly where everything needs to go. So I there's the two lar or the one large like cluster of strawberries and a couple little flowers and the little swirly. And then there's um individual strawberries, flowers, etc. And yeah, I just used some craft tacky glue. I used a couple different shades of red cardstock for the strawberries just to mix it up a bit. And then yeah, an ivory cardstock for the flowers. I use this kind of like I don't have a, a source for this like kind of orangey colored cardstock that I found in my stash that I had like random scraps of. And I used three different shades of green again just to give it that little extra something and then all of these wafer dies also like imprint pattern and I'll show that I actually was able to show it really well at the end of the video because of course the lighting even in my photos they just everything kind of gets blown out but there's little like all the details in the leaves and there's all the little dots in the strawberries and details in the flowers and just I love it <laughs> I love these die sets they're just fun uh I don't know I, I I'm quite enjoying just sitting and die cutting and assembling things and creating all these little things so after I did all the strawberries I also used the new terracotta planters and I die cut them from that same kind of random orangey colored cardstock and then um just some dark brown cardstock I was thinking about how fun this would be to use like um, like some rusty hinged distress paint and some like solid patina add a little brown I got ideas man but yeah if you don't have the right color of cardstock just use like white and ink blend and like distress inks especially or again rusty hinge would be like the perfect color to do like terracotta so anyway I die cut those pieces I also um, ran some pieces of white cardstock through with the damask a2 cover plate that's another one you can't you can't see the detail right now, but at the end, I'll go close up and show you guys because it doesn't cut anything. It just imprints the pattern and chef's kiss, love. It It's subtle. I'll get to that later. Anyway, I assembled the terracotta planter. Don't do that. Adhere everything first. <laughs> then put the back on it. I, I ended up like having, I'm like trying to peel it apart, trying to stick all the little bits and pieces in. And I was like shaking my head at myself. So as always, do as I say, not what I, not as I do. You know, I need to get that tattooed on me. <laughs> it's, it's literally my life. Anyway, I assembled all of these. I put like the big cluster in the top and then, you know, they've got all these little openings, which are just perfect to tuck in the individual little strawberries and the blossoms. And yeah, I really enjoyed this. And then it just made me like, I can't wait. I can't wait till it gets warm out. I like to have, like, I've been getting a little better at growing some little strawberries and whatnot. Um, I don't grow very many of them because my dog eats them. <laughs> The, the, the birds get at them and and yeah although he, he's shown not so much interest in it but yeah I got to be careful about the stuff I plant in the backyard and especially if it's something one if it's something I enjoy or something that might be poisonous my dog decides to just 
he like he eats my roses and ugh, he's a goober anyway anyway did all my little assembling set all that aside I then of course want to do some hot foiling and I'm using the love hot foil uh, plate and wafer die set and I only need two sentiments but I had this piece of cardstock and I was like mm, I can fit multiples on here why not do you know while I'm doing the process let's do several sentiments because then the next time I go to use it I'll already have some done so what I have been finding that's really been working for me well is I took my glimmer hot foil and I'm taping it to the cardstock this is just Simon's smooth white cardstock tape it to the cardstock with little bits of the spellbinders tape and then I chose the sentiments and a couple extras that I wanted to use from that love hot foil plate set and I'm taping those into place too so that they're spaced far enough apart that I can die cut them plus taping them so that I can then flip this over onto my glimmer hot foil machine which is already on the green light is on so get everything in place press the timer button put the the shim and the plate on top of that and then I'm going to go to, like let that go till the light goes solid and then just slowly run this through my platinum six machine and then um, I wasn't going to do this but then I was like oh wait I did the whole you know piece of cardstock with these sentiments let's do the solid hot foil plate and see if I can get the reverse of these as well because same thing I've been getting good results with it so pulled out my solid hot foil plate put that onto the machine with the solid hot foil plate sometimes it helps to um, let it stay on the machine run the timer shut it off do it a second time to really get it to heat up again it's going to depend on your machine and what works for you for me I've been finding I actually don't need to do that I just stuck it on there while the machine was heating back up and then it, it and then when I do the timer it's more than enough so I had removed the foil from that cardstock all the sentiments foiled fabulously love and then I took another piece of cardstock close in size and again I'm taping the foil to the cardstock especially with the solid plate this is what I found like was a game changer for me so the foil is taped in place so it's not going to go anywhere I'm making sure I don't have any big wrinkles or anything like that in it and the machine is now ready the plate is good and hot so I just stick the cardstock with the foil pretty side of the foil facing the plate press my timer let that go until the timer goes solid and this is the only time it's only with the solid plate that I will run it back and forth through my die cut machine I don't do that with the other hot foil plates anything because I find that that just makes more of a mess but with this I really really slowly run it just back forth once done and then um to remove the hot foil this hot foil plate because like i got asbestos fingers i things don't bother me this plate does get hot though because it's big you know so i just flip over the actual glimmer machine onto the silicone mat to get the plate off let it cool down takes a bit of effort to remove the spellbinders tape because again that plate gets hot it like fuses the tape into the cardstock but i don't care i just want it to foil you know so i peel off the tape and then I peeled off the backing and it foiled again chef's kiss perfectly I love when that happens <laughs> it's so satisfying so it's like oh yay I have tons of sentiments now I'm only going to use two but now I got a pile I die cut them with the coordinating dies so I have like the regular gold hot foil sentiments and then I have like the reverse how fun is that and those I'll just put in the packaging so next time I go to grab this set it's like oh I've got a whole little stack of a bunch of foiled sentiments and I didn't toss out the the leftover bits of the foiled cardstock. I'll get to that in a minute too. So I've got my sentiments. I've got my little strawberry clusters in their little terracotta planters. And then I have my backgrounds that I had embossed with that damask A2 cover plate. So I'm going to adhere my little strawberry concoctions onto both of these uh, backgrounds. And then I also adhered a few of the extra strawberries and blooms that I had die cut just to fill everything out you know until I was basically happy with it did that with both backgrounds left off the sentiments for the moment because I wanted to add splatter because <laughs> you know I did the gold sentiments I was like mm, it needs gold splatter it's just meant to be so I used my Gonzai Tombi starry night starry watercolors starry nights my brain is like 
all over the place. Just starry colors. You know, the same ones I use in a bajillion videos. And I put water in there already, worked it up, used my fan brush, splattered it onto both of these backgrounds that were inside my splat box to keep the splatter from getting all over the place. Trust me, I, I learn sometimes from my mistakes. And then my next video, I'll probably be like, oh, I didn't need my splat box. And then I got like splatter on my favorite shirt. Anyway, anyway, set those aside to dry. My card bases are top folding A2 white note cards. And I am using sentiments from the best of everything stamp set. And I lined up the sentiments onto the inside of the card. And I'm inking these up with Simon's Field positively saturated ink so just a nice green and stamping a different sentiment onto the inside of each card i've included these cards in my valentine playlist just because because like i said like i've said a million times um i like a lot of my cards like they could be valentines but they could also be just any occasion these are definitely ones like the one that says hugs and kisses on the front but it's you know strawberries that can be a generic term for anything and then the on the inside this is the one that says thank you for always being there so this could just be for a friend you know anything like that so after i had stamped sentiments i added the last of the little strawberry and blooms uh, die cuts to the inside just to, you know, tie it all together. Once I got those adhered, I just flip these over and trim off the little bits that are hanging off the edge of the card. So I got those trimmed off. And then to adhere these foiled sentiments, I'm going to use a combination of just craft tacky glue and some foam strips because there's a lot of dimension going on with all of the die cut pieces. So I put the foam strips on the areas where um, there are no die cuts. So just stuck those into place. And then I was having difficulty for whatever reason getting the backing off. So I just used my little die pick, um, like my die release tool, just to pick off the little bits of backing there. And then craft tacky glue, stuck that into place, and then repeated that with the second card front. So the one says hello, the other says hugs and kisses. Yeah, doesn't have to be necessarily Valentine's, although I'm going to add a few hearts. So once I got those adhered, the hearts, I die cut the leftover bits from the solid hot foil sentiments. There was, you know, little areas of just gold hot foil. And I've shown this in other videos. I like to use little like star wafer dies or little heart wafer dies to die cut those because they're all foiled and shiny and it basically just makes my own embellishments. So die cut those, have way more than I need. I just put those as well in the packaging with the wafer dies. Next time I pull it out, it's like, ooh, I've got all these little like red die cuts, these little gold foil die cuts, you know, perfect. So I added a few little hearts to both of these cards, just adhered those into place with uh, craft tacky glue. So this gets, you know, gives them a little more of a nudge into the Valentine category. But again, not even remotely specifically Valentine's. So once I've got all of those adhered, both of these panels are A2 size. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half. I decided not to trim them down at all. And I'm just going to adhere these to those card bases with craft tacky glue. And you can always... Like, you know, I've got the little bits hanging over the edges on both of these little bits of strawberries. You could either do a larger envelope. That works. Um, I don't, I, I just have A2 envelopes for like my next size up is like, I think I've got a few, you know, five by seven envelopes in my stash, which is fine. But I don't have a problem cutting off the bits that are hanging off. You, you know, your brain just sees it and finishes the image as it is. Um, I mention this because I've had a few people over years give me serious grief over cutting off elements hanging off cards. Once you do it once, it doesn't bother you. So I, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> but you could leave it there and just use a large envelope. It works. So I just flipped these over, trimmed off that excess with my scissors, paired these with some red envelopes, and that finished off the cards. So I'm going to get super close up so you guys can see all of that embossed detail from those wafer dies. Look at it. Isn't it fabulous? Like seriously, all the little dots in the strawberries and the spines and the leaves and that damask background, which is just super subtle and I love it. So as always, I will have a link below the video. I'll have a link to my blog post. 
in my blog post. It's picture links. So if you see something in one of my videos and you're not sure, check out the blog post because it's picture links. So then you can see the product or the tool or whatever it is helps to find the things. So I'll have all that info in the description box directly below the video. And then of course, at the end, I'll also link to my Valentine playlist and I'll link to that release and review video that I mentioned, all that stuff. So that'll be at the end as well. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos and thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.